about thinking up new things and new ideas. I just want it to be fresh. Yes, come on. I can sing every song out of a songbook as long as it's fresh. Come on. Y'all are quiet. Did the shout button go off at noon? <laughs> so Jesus, not only did he deliver this man of any demonic oppression, but he in one fell swoop got rid of the devil and the unclean things. Come on. <laughs> Ah. Look at this. Let me read a scripture and I'll be done. Luke chapter 8, verse 35. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man. Look, they knew who he was. He was a city icon. Found the man whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. When the story started, this guy's residence was a tomb. Is that not what it said at the beginning? And when the story ended, his residence was the feet of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I will trade in a graveyard for the feet of yes. Jesus Amen. every day of the week. Amen. I don't care what I have to walk through, what I have to go through, who I have to hear, right. what I have to do. If I'm going to go from a graveyard and a tombstone to being at his feet, I will do it. I will make the journey. Amen. He started in a tombstone and he ended at the feet of Jesus. I believe you can come in here today and you can be so full of dead things and living around dead things and feeling so dead and deep inside. But one touch That's of right. Jesus Amen. will take you from a graveyard Amen. into where Jesus yes. is and at Amen. his feet. Yes. Because when a genuine father shows up, he began to exercise the demons. He began to reposition the man. And there also the issue came. Now he's exercised the demons. Jesus has gotten rid of the unclean things. Let me just throw this at you. The man is sitting there. He went from the graveyard to the feet of Jesus. He went to being full of devils to his right mind. And Jesus also wiped out any connection of unclean. And now this man is sitting here. The Bible says he's in his right mind and he's demonic free and he's, and he's gotten rid of all unclean things. And he's sitting here at peace and rest. But yet, just think of this. Where did he get the rope? My Bible does not say that they were next down the street from a Walmart. So nobody ran to the local Walmart and picked this dude up a road. Huh? Where did... Worst case scenario, the church, Peter, James, and John, provided a road. Best case scenario, Jesus Christ himself. Yes provided a road. Amen. The Bible is not clear, nor do we know. But either case, worst case, the church took off its identity and said, here is your road. Mine. Best case scenario, Jesus, the yes. son of the most high. Maybe that's what it means when it says, put on Christ. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Huh? So he's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Clothed and in his right mind. You can go from absolutely no identification to being identified as a son of the Most High God. This man went from no identification to an identification because of the robe. Because either he was wearing... Peter, James, and John's robe, or he was wearing Jesus' robe. It didn't matter. They all had the robe of righteousness. So this man went from graveyard tombstone, no identity, no rest, and no peace, to at the feet of Jesus with identity. And I am the son of the Most High God. Because this gentleman, he went from being a nobody to being a sent one. Meaning, if you read on down, and for the sake of time, I'll just tell you what it says. It says that as Jesus was leaving, because the pig watchers drove Jesus out. Because they cared more about their ritual than this gentleman getting free. 
and they cared more about their unclean things than about miracles happening. Come on. The pig watchers said that they were afraid, and they begged Jesus to leave, and they drove him out. And the Bible says that as Jesus gets on the boat to go back to the other side, over to Galilee, the Bible says that this gentleman wanted to go, and he says, Jesus said, no, I need you to stay here, and I'm going to send you into these cities and towns and you tell them of the glory of God that has been on your life. This man went from a dead man living in a cave to being a son of the Most High God yes. and being sent by Jesus. Hallelujah. You talk about a transformation that happened in one fell swoop. Let me share this story with you. If you've ever heard of the gentleman Smith Wigglesworth he was an awesome minister many, many years ago. He was a phenomenal evangelist that went across the country. He would even go into other parts of countries. This particular excursion that he was on, he was actually in another country. And he was holding revivals there and just holding outdoor meetings. And he would just, he would just go in the field and begin preaching. People would show up. People would give their heart and life over to Jesus Christ because of the anointing and the word that was on his life. And he was preaching the gospel and he was showing the real Jesus. Many awesome things happened in his life. In this particular excursion, he's across seas in another country. And he's staying at a house or a home because, you know, this is back in the day where they didn't have hotels on every corner. He was staying in a house of a lady who was not there at the time. Her and her husband was, was on a some kind of vacation journey for about a month. And so he actually stayed in their house, in their room, as he was holding this revival and holding these series of services. As this particular series of services was winding up, he was packing his stuff and he was getting ready to head to the next meeting of series in the next town over. And the wife came up to him and said, Mr. Smith, could you please stay? My husband is unsaved. And, and I've been praying for him, and I've been, I've been asking God to save him, and I know if you could just stay in the house with us, maybe your anointing would be there, and, and maybe he would sense something on you. And, and Smith Wigglesworth said these words, he said, I cannot stay, because they're already expecting me, but I slept in your bed. Don't change the sheets. Don't wash the sheets. I laid there. I prayed in your bread. I studied in your bread. Bed. I heard God's voice in your bed. Because a lot of times, if you know anything about this man, he would only sleep for 15, 20 minutes at a time. And then the Holy Spirit would wake him up and he would just roll over and just begin to pray for about 5 or 10 minutes. And then he would go back to sleep. And then he would sleep for about 30 minutes and he would wake up. And so he had a constant prayer life going to God. And he said, don't change the sheets. Just don't wash them. Just let him lay there. Don't say nothing to him. Just let God's anointing be there. He, he goes on to say this in one of his books, that as he left, he got word that the first night that this gentleman slept in bed, he could only lay there about 12 minutes because the Holy Spirit just started just moving on him. Lord. I'm talking about identity in your garments. Come on. The lady just left the sheets there. Didn't do nothing about it. The next night, he lay trying. I'm going to go to bed, honey. Okay. And he goes to bed. He pulls up. Over, and he can only lay there about 20 minutes because, because of the anointing of where it was there. You understand? It wasn't the bed. It wasn't the sheets. It wasn't nothing flaky. But it was about somebody carrying the real yes. Jesus. Yes. And where they had been was so saturated with the real Jesus yes. that the people following them still yes. felt Amen. the real Jesus. Amen. 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 When we was down at the ramp, 